Hi, today we're going to make ASP3, and this is a simple reaction between uh, sodium P3 anion of niobium uh, and arsenic trichloride. So first we're just going to weigh out the uh, sodium P3 anion. It's a very uh, s uh, sticky compound that kind of flies away in the gold box, so you need to use a static strip. Uh, it should look like orange-yellow needles. Uh, it crystallizes very well from uh, ether THF mixtures. And we're going to use three grams. A little high. That's pretty good. So you want to get this into your flask uh, along with 60 milliliters of THF before you open your arsenic trichloride because you don't want to contaminate your THF uh, with arsenic trichloride vapors. So I usually just weigh out three, or not weigh out, but measure out three vials of THF. Uh, so that'll be about 60 milliliters. So the sodium P3 niobium complex changes color uh, when... When THF is added, it darkens to more of a red orange from a yellow orange. And that's consistent when you crystallize the fully THF solvated uh, P3 anion, it's much more of a red color. Turn on the stirring. Make sure that all gets dissolved. Alright, and then we'll stick it into the cold well. Does it take long for the solids to dissolve? No, they're very soluble in THF, so it's pretty much instantaneous <laughs> upon adding the THF. We'll just put that into the cold well. And then we'll weigh out the arsenic trichloride. Uh, so arsenic-3 is quite toxic, so you, you definitely want to handle it, uh, well, if possible, in a gold box. And uh, you want to dispose of all of the glass waste that's touched it uh, very carefully. So uh, you want to set aside your pipettes and your vials and uh, dispose of them properly. Make sure it's labeled so that the waste people uh, don't yeah, get contaminated or get in contact with arsenic trichloride. So it's a colorless liquid, and we're going to weigh out uh, 564 milligrams. So it's a little high. Take out a drop. So we'll go with that. We were a little high on our sodium P3 anion, so that should be fun. Uh, cap that. We have cap. So is the catalyst closed now? The catalyst is closed when we use a. Uh, these volatile uh, fluoride containing species that might react with the copper. Uh, so definitely with arsenic trichloride, you want your catalyst closed. Uh, and then before you purge, you want to drop the cold well so that any that has condensed in the cold well will uh, evaporate. 
so we always seal it with tape. And it's in a, a, a bottle that's uh, kept out of the light. At room temperature? At room temperature, and that's how it's stored. Um, so uh, we're gonna do a quick purge, and then we're gonna add THF uh, to this so that we can uh, transfer this more easily. So the quick purge is uh, to clear the atmosphere of any excess arsenic trichloride so we don't contaminate our THF. And then uh, we'll put this into the cold well, uh, let it freeze along with the solution of the P3 anion, and then we'll mix them. So we'll come back in a minute. This side of the gold box so that the ASP3 isn't directly exposed to harsh light since it is uh, slightly light sensitive. Um, you can see that the sodium P3 anion has basically crashed out of the THF as it's very crystalline once it encounters THF uh, and it's cold. <laughs> so we're just gonna get this, try to get this stern, and then we're going to add uh, slowly our thawing solution of arsenic trichloride in THF. How long did you let the two reagents cool down? So they cooled down for about 10 minutes until they just started to freeze. And you'll start to see here pretty soon this is going to change appearance and become sort of dark red black. It's going now. So it goes from that kind of yellow orange color of the P3 anion and it darkens. the rest of this. So we're going to let this warm up to room temperature and stir for about uh, one hour, uh, maybe slightly less, and then uh, we'll come back and we'll filter.